Buenos días, ¿qué tal? ¿Cómo están? Un gusto. Mi nombre es José Cruz Cordis. I actually work in Costa Rica as manager of the Marine Program. Because it's a It's my honor as he presents to you just the work of a lot of people that helped me. It's a project that not just involves engineering, but as a series of elements uh, in the rehabilitation of, uh, of, uh, of these plants in Ecoya in the uh, west part of Costa Rica. The Gulf of Ecoya is one of the, or the, or the largest um, largest mangrove areas in, in the country. And these sites that we to work on the process of restoration is the Estadio Punta Arenas and the area and the Nistro wetland specifically. There you go. Specifically in Punta Arenas, it's a wild area that's protected for about uh, 3,700 hectares of, uh, of mangroves. For, for those of you who know this, it's a great intervention of human activities around um, these mangroves. So previously, we have to carry out an identification. Uh, we have to announce this uh, through a collaboration with the Cate people of the loss of uh, of mangroves from about 50 years ago up to this date, which we see in, in this uh, yellow and red uh, colors. With this, we have success potentially that we work and be sites for the rehabilitation of this ecosystem, which are the numbers that you see in the screen. And as we announced the field, we should define two specific sites, which is the one that says two and three, or then two and three. So you, you might hear me say site two or three, and that's how we actually uh, know these rehabilitation sites. And the factors of degradation in general are actually quite broad. Unfortunately, in Punta Arenas, uh, agriculture, urban development, and agriculture, the extension of agriculture is precisely the issue that we had had in the loss of uh, of mangrove. If we see this is the mangrove, this is where they can burn, and this is um, a sugarcane uh, plantation. So this is the place that was um, identified as uh, site number two. We get you see this, we can see forest over here, the forest, which is the mangrove, and we still, it has like, like, like a notch and just not a mangrove that was lost uh, to cultivate a sugar cane. This is the uh, driver of Renna Renna, and this is how it's seen. There's other sugar cane, and there's a really key the mangroves at the very end. And there's the second site is even larger. So it's the area of over 200 hectares that was actually lost. And I think it was, uh, you were sit over here and about 45 or 40 or 30 years ago, there was a huge uh, mangrove area. And what you can see right now is there's a sugar cane. Um, so, so for those of you who actually know this place, uh, this is the uh, Aranajuez River um, outlet. And here you can see the river, you can see uh, the mangrove that's signed, you can see the city of Punta Arenas over here. There's a, a little bank of uh, about 200, uh, 200 meters of mangrove that's alive right now. So this river, it's one of the rivers that floods the area, and then the and it's even more extreme has been from this river. So we've actually asked ourselves what would happen when this uh, mangrove is not here that actually has the function of actually protecting against city against this uh, flood. So these events and the modification that's been carried out uh, through sedimentation is what generated this problem that we here. The sedimentation actually causes the loss of the death of the mangrove. People actually cut them down. They actually, um, they actually plant sugarcane, which is a very fertile, a very fertile land. So as you can see, just imagine like a place like this, you simply can't do, you can't, you can't plant, it's not possible to actually uh, plant the seedlings and it's extremely modified. That's why we start to actually providing and rehabilitate the conditions that at what moment were actually uh, a mangrove ecosystem. And this is precisely the word. If I actually manage to go to the next slide. We go on to the next slide, please. So there you go. So the um, the 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 work the work that we're actually doing is the development of a series of uh, elements that are actually taken as reference from from historical sites in in the uh, um, adjoining mangroves. This was done together with Sinat and with colleagues from the Acatie. I'm not going to I can talk about all the different elements. I just want to show you this list, which is different factors, all the factors that need to be analyzed. And I'll just comment on a few of these. 
This is an historic analysis of the hydrology of both sites. And three, and it's this, this one is from Arapuez River. The yellow and green that you see over here, this is how it was many years ago. The basin of this river, it's a basin that for, it might be normal uh, with less of curves. And this blue fluid color is how it is today, been modified by agriculture activity. So this is quite obvious to think that there's a flood or extreme climatic activity. This form will not help of actually stopping all the sediment. And this was part of what actually caused this problem. So this is analysis of the um, of how the salinity can actually be uh, modified in the different um, rehabilitation. This is important because we talk about, uh, about saltwater intrusion. And the sugarcane, you can cut it, burn it, and, and, and bury it, and it comes out again. But it's very bad and resisting salt water and uh, flooding. So, one of the most important aspects to analyze was the topography of the terrain. So, the copy from the setting map in its topography division actually carried out analysis of the topography, a very detailed of, of, uh, of a centimeters of accuracy, and it's spectacular. I was seeing how this was before. And based on this, we actually studied what's our intervention plan. And ideally, the idea was to, or is to actually remove of the sediments as they just generate a space where we can actually as you take that flooding of the area so we actually analyze especially the highest part which is found out that by doing this meant to actually withdraw 2.5 million cubic meters of material and if this sounds like a lot or little just so you have an idea a a a, 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 a dump truck a dump truck has 13 cubic meters of material so we would need 200,000 dump trucks to actually take all this material away. I mean, we don't have this in the country. And then what do we do with all this material? That's, you know, so definitely that was not an option, but this was an option. And it is to develop a system of of, uh, of uh, canals, of pre-existing canals within the mangrove that when with the estuaries, it's in the darker color. So each one of these uh, green canals is connected to an estuary and to introduce uh, the way natural incoming water and to start to have an intervention and modify in these um in these uh, colored areas these are very large areas this is uh, about 30 hectares and this is an area of about 155 sorry 125 hectares and this is how the project started so we can see that with it behind the macro and how to develop it of these uh, canals which is done this picture is you have an idea this is someone that is quite large, and the people that actually work over here, where I see guiding themselves by uh, by GPS systems, and with their GPS systems, they, they will actually follow the uh, uh, the this line to actually uh, bring this in. And the people from the low, uh, from the local community actually assist and help with the tracing to develop these uh, develop these canals. This is in the um, in the Shurikin area within the mangrove to connect. To connect this, we simply cannot, uh, we cannot bring in this machinery. So all this work was done absolutely by hand uh, through people and collaborators from the local communities. So um, this is how we see this today. This is the picture we can see Punta Arenas and the Adams West River. There's an extensive uh, canal system. There's under a different site in uh, Rio Seco. And just recently, we actually did a uh, a, a, canal, a canal system that's included and to have a greater coverage. So based on this uh, canal system on November of 2021, we started to rehabilitate and naturally uh, the, the seedlings were actually uh, sent and these were developed. We see the whole bunch of different seedlings that actually started to actually uh, place. These are Avicenia plants and the process of rehabilitation was done completely naturally. This is what was before when this was connected. And now we will see today, you can see the amount of seedlings over here, the different species, there's different, uh, um, there's a seedlings of some route at the system, there's fishes, there's crustaceans, there's even crocodiles that are actually over here. And at the other side, very, very quickly, um, next, uh, because uh, this is the site in which the, uh, where the uh, field trip is going to be done uh, on Thursday, which is in these little wetlands that actually is over here in the uh, in Sipan Sea in that representation area, where there's an intervention by by uh, strip or shrimp uh, development. And this area that's over here was an area that was uh, developed without permits, but there's uh, an extension that was really illegal. 
and uh, and the modification of all the ecosystem actually created or generated alterations in other parts. So based on this, we have developed the intervention of uh, different strategies that consisted of the opening of different walls, this is a hydrological um, at a more simple scale. If there was an analysis of base, but this is a lot easier. These are areas that are very, very low. So it consisted of a hydrological rehabilitation based on the opening of walls that were done by these uh, tanks and internal development of canals and the pre-existing and the withdrawal of pre-existing uh, canals. This was also um, done by hand, uh, by the difficulty of, of, of the situation with committee members. And this is very interesting. You'll see that this picture actually shows the conditions that the FDA is working. It's completely uh, uh, compacted, the full salt. These plants you see over here, we have uh, for many years when the sex was abandoned. And um, when you go over there, you are going to be fully, uh, fully muddy. There's a salt and the plant will be a lot larger. So this was interesting work because we actually developed this uh, through the collaboration of a women's association, the women's association and the conservation of the Gulf of Nicoya. So uh, the women are actually uh, led this effort and this was done in collaboration with uh, fishermen from the New School community, which is quite interesting. You can just imagine that many of these communities, uh, the uh, this work is, uh, you know, source of employment is very difficult, they're very complicated. So this is a quick overview of the results. Uh, it was about more than 30 kilometers of canals and almost 50 kilometers, I'm sorry, almost 12 kilometers were dug up by hand. And and the results as you mentioned was very important but as you want to actually I mentioned that this is the work from Jorge Pineda, where he actually analyzed uh, how this change of uh, mangrove ecosystems towards uh, agriculture, you lose about 73% of the accumulation of carbon. And he actually analyzes how this carbon starts to improve this rate, at least in sediment when there's a restoration, a restoration process. And we see here to, to the right is a model of what, on the site, as he mentioned, we we'll see at the very beginning, there is a, uh, a recovery of this accumulation and how the ecosystem has to be improved. We see that there's a better accumulation of material. So this is actually um, shown in a, in, a, in a national process of monitoring uh, as, as part of the a national protocol process and includes a series of, of uh, supplies for the mar participators monitoring of the community to, to conclude. I just want to say that this process actually taught us that coordination is critical uh, with all these institutions and different stakeholders. The involvement of people in the community is critical as well. It's very important to see exactly how people that over 30 years ago if you worked in development of these tanks, today they can use that knowledge to rehabilitate this mangrove. So I truly believe that this has been actually this was the process and the largest uh, project of our uh, of restoration of uh, mangroves over here and very interesting experiments. We know that it actually works and we actually need definitely the support to actually replicate this project for this type of initiative. This just started, the, mo the monitoring and maintenance is essential and we, we continue to do this. I know I was very quick. There's a lot of things that I want to say, but any questions, uh, please let me know. Thank you so much. Muchas gracias. Um, we, yes, we've been asked uh, to try and present you guys a video relating to these projects. So we're quickly going to try and do that. And then we're going to have a, a shorter question session, please, about 10 minutes. La gente piensa que restaurar manglares es como un bosque de las algas. Tiene que entender que la restauración de manglares tiene que ver con la restauración de algunas condiciones previas para que se dé el establecimiento de manglares. Hay que tener bases científicas, ya que cada especie depende de ciertas condiciones. Lo que estábamos recuperando pues no era unas partes o unas plantas de manglar, eran extensiones sumamente grandes de manglar que se perdieron. Entonces lo que había que hacer era rehabilitar las condiciones de esa área para que el manglar lograra poco a poco volver a 
reintroducirse y recuperarse al ecosistema. Es una escala que nunca se había hecho acá en, en el país. En este sitio que estamos no se puede hacer una reforestación porque las condiciones del suelo no lo permiten, son suelos compactados, eh, el agua también ingresa, entonces si sembramos una plántula de mangle se nos va a morir. Rehabilitar las condiciones hidrológicas era lo más importante. Si no rehabilitamos la hidrología de este lugar, no íbamos a hacer nada. Es saber cómo ingresaban las mareas, o cómo hacer para que las mareas ingresaran y salieran de esta área para que el mangar pudiera desarrollarse. Entonces tuvimos que hacer bastantes cosas, desde conocer cuál era la, la estructura, la dirección que tenían los ríos y los esteros hace muchísimos años cuando había manglar y cómo podíamos hacer para restablecerla de cierta manera hoy en día. La gente piensa que restaurar manglares es como un bosque de tierras altas. Tiene que entender que la restauración de manglares tiene que ver con la restauración de algunas condiciones previas para que se dé el establecimiento de manglar. Hay que tener bases científicas, ya que cada especie depende de ciertas condiciones. Lo que estábamos recuperando pues, no eran unas partes o unas plantas de manglar, eran extensiones sumamente grandes de manglar que se perdieron. Entonces lo que había que hacer era rehabilitar las condiciones de esa área para que el manglar lograra poco a poco volver a reintroducirse y recuperarse al ecosistema. Es una escala que nunca se había hecho acá en, en el país. En este sitio que estamos no se puede hacer una reforestación porque las condiciones del suelo no lo permiten, son suelos compactados, eh, el agua también ingresa, entonces si sembramos una plántula de mangle se nos va a morir. Rehabilitar las condiciones hidrológicas era lo más importante. Si no rehabilitamos la hidrología de este lugar, no vamos a hacer nada.